The greatest show in college sports is right around the corner. That's right. The annual Penn State Whiteout game is this Saturday. Welcome back to Penn State Sports Night. I'm Gianna Kataya, joined by Joey David and Chris Machado. Number seven ranked Penn State will face off against number 24, Iowa. But before we get into the main event, let's recap the Nittany Lions win over Illinois. So guys, Penn State played Illinois this past Saturday. 32-13 win, ugly win. But for Penn State, a win is a win. Offense, in my opinion, was sloppy. The offensive line did not protect their quarterback whatsoever. But on the other hand, the defense was looking mighty fine. They had four interceptions from four different players, like outstanding performance by the defense. But what was your thoughts on the game, Joey? So I'm going to go right into the offense first. And as you talked about, the offense didn't look great. But there's a reason for that. The defense forced four turnover, five turnovers, excuse me, four interceptions. And with that, Penn State was forced into shorter fields, and they weren't able to definitely go against, go with the exact game plan that they had, because you don't really game plan to have five turnovers, but, I mean, they always help. So, I mean, with that coming, it's going to hurt Drew Aller a little bit, because he is a younger quarterback, and they want him to work through the game plan, and they want him to go through his progressions, and they want to do it correctly. So what they did instead was they fed the running backs, which it, I would have done the same way. It's probably the right thing to do as it doesn't look so flashy, but feeding the running backs is probably the best thing to do for this offense. And they even went to the back of the playbook, opened it up. Tyler, Lor Tyler Warren caught a touchdown pass from Trey Potts. And one other thing I really want to look at, though, is kicking. Special teams finally looks better. Alex Falcons went three for four from the field, only missing a 50-yarder and hitting all of his extra points. And that's going to be a big special teams need that this team needs to have to make sure that they're converting on every point situation possible. And well, for myself, I'm going to highlight the defense. And two guys right there, Chop Robinson and Abdul Carter, Fantastic throughout the entire game, and Gianna, you said it yourself, and we hear it all the time. Defense wins championships. Well, in this situation, they 100% won Penn State this game. And you mentioned it, offense really, really sloppy. Drew Aller, once again, another consecutive week of not being protected by an O-line that everybody said was going to be great. And I'm kind of flustered. I do not know how Penn State remained at number seven in the AP poll. I'm sorry, in my, uh, excuse me, in my opinion, Washington and Notre Dame both had way better games than Penn State. So, a little bit surprising. Don't know where the AP poll is going to go with that, but defense looked fantastic. But once again, just offense sloppy again. Mm -hmm. How much else to add? Great points. Now to the main event, the whiteout this weekend. Big game for Penn State. They faced Iowa two years ago in Hawkeye territory. The fans there, incredible for the Hawkeyes. They caused Penn State to have eight false starts. But now Penn State's hosting them for the whiteout, which is an unbelievable atmosphere. So Penn State's definitely looking to do the same thing to them in a redemption tour. Um, what does Penn State have to do to get the win on Saturday, Chris? Well, I got two things for you, and well, technically three. You know the stadium is going to be a factor, as you mentioned, but I want to highlight the wide receivers first on the offense. So they, gotta, they just got to do more. I mean, they were not getting open against Illinois, a team that they definitely, definitely should have. And now that... You're going up against Iowa. Iowa has one of the best defenses in all of NCAA D1 college football. And it's going to be interesting to see what the Nittany Lions are going to do there. Their wide receivers got to give Drew Aller way more options. They're going to have to create separation on these Iowa defensive backs. The other thing, this is the game where Penn State starts to use Nicholas Singleton more. And that's why I have him highlighted up there. You kind of realize throughout these first three games, Katron Allen was taking almost every single snap. You really wouldn't see Singleton come in unless it was just, you know, a one-yard, two-yard touchdown when Penn State was at the um, goal line. I think this is the game, and I think because of that, Penn State didn't want to show all of their cards. So this is the game where Singleton has his breakout to start the season. Try and go 4-0 if you're Penn State, and that's what they're going to have to do. 
Yeah, Chris, honestly, that's a great point. And I'm going to go very differently to you, honestly. And the first thing that Gianna said that I really wanted to highlight was that Penn State lost their last matchup to Iowa. And you know Coach Franklin is always going to harp on that to his team. He's going to want to fire them up, and I guarantee it works. They're going to be on their home field, and he's going to tell them to really defend their home turf. Second thing I have to point out is that the run defense, I've been saying it for so long now, especially to you. I think you're sick of me hearing it at this point. This run defense needs to be better. When you look at Iowa's receiver core, their best receiver has 131 receiving yards this year, and now he's hurt. Only one player on that roster, which is him, has double-digit receptions. They're not going to spread the ball around. As great as the secondary is, they're going to have a very quiet day. It's going to be on Penn State to really stack the box, beat, the, beat them through their run, and really show why this defensive line and this front seven is as strong as it is. But finally, I want to make sure that Drew Aller does not have any worries about going into his first whiteout as the starting quarterback. He needs to just sit back. He needs to enjoy the game. He needs to feed off the whiteout conditions and really make it just like this game the 2019 whiteout where Shea Patterson couldn't hear first play of the game, delay a game gets called or a timeout. I, I honestly forget. It's been a while. <laughs> but either way, whiteout conditions, they made their presence felt, and it needs to make sure that it happens against Iowa and for Penn State. You both are absolutely right. The whiteout is no joke. Penn State will have to be on their game so now I want to get into, to finish up this segment, score predictions. Me personally, I think the Nittany Lions will win 35 to 21 only if Penn State starts out hot and Drew doesn't have a slow start like he did in the Illinois game. The defense is definitely going to be the most important factor of that game. Chris, you said it, defense wins championships. And I think that this matchup, will be a battle of the defense between Penn State defense and Iowa defense. So, Joey, what's your score prediction? Well, I love holidays. Holidays are very <laughs> important to me. And today is actually National Hamburger Day. So, where do I think Penn State's going to go this weekend? Forty Burger. I think Penn State's <laughs> going to come out strong. I think they're going to come out hot. And I think Drew Aller is really going to feed off of this whiteout environment and Chris said it perfectly I think they're gonna really open up the playbook now and they're gonna show how explosive this offense is so I'm gonna have the Nittany Lions winning 40 to 21 because that run defense still isn't perfect and I'm pretty sure that the Hawkeyes are gonna break off a couple but the one bold prediction I really have for this game I think Nick Singleton does have a great game I think it's on special teams I think he's gonna bring one back <sighs> Joey, Joey, oh no, my good pal Joey. Oh no, I got one question for you. Are you watching the same football games as me? <laughs> because my score prediction here is Penn State 27, Iowa 21. This game's going to be a shootout. You know that. And this is going to be Penn State's toughest game yet. Their first game going to go, excuse me, going up against a ranked opponent. Granted, yes, I understand. It's number seven versus number 24. I don't care. This is game is going to be a shootout. I think this game is 21-21 heading into the fourth quarter. And then I think it's just a defensive battle from there. Alex Falcons, I'm banking on him getting two field goals in the fourth quarter for Penn State. And that's the rest of what happens in this game. 27 to 21 is my final. And if you're Penn State, you get revenge for that. Okay, that was a bold take, Chris, definitely. I think me and Joey are on the same page He's for the fun. whiteout. <laughs> but maybe, maybe I'm being pessimistic, but maybe I'm being realistic. You always we'll find are. out. You always we are. will find out this Saturday for the main event, the whiteout, the greatest show in college sports. That's all we have time for for this edition of Penn State Sports Night. For Joey David and Chris Machado, I'm Gianna Kataya. Thanks for watching and have a great night. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning into this edition of Penn State Sports Night. For more content like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, give us a like, and follow our socials down below. And as always, we are Penn State Sports Night.